Hi, welcome to the talk on threshold concepts. Um, so I'm going to do this talk in a series of three, three videos, um, each of them about 15 minutes each. Um, and hopefully that will make it more easy to understand. Um, I, ideally, I would have liked to do this with a bit of discussion as well in between. So I've set exercises in between that you can do via a discussion forum. Um, and um, I will let you know the points at which you, that's supposed to happen. So in the talks today, um, we'll be looking at generally what makes something difficult to learn and how this links in with threshold concepts. Um, I'll then give you different examples of what threshold concepts are across different disciplines, um, including some of research that I've done um, into threshold concepts in psychiatry, and I'll be showing you those. Um, we'll then be looking at what the purpose is of threshold concepts and the and how we then go on to design curriculums and teaching activities once we've identified what a threshold concept is. So the most difficult part, I think, is, is getting to grips with the definition of threshold concepts. This is something that lots of people struggle with when they encounter this theory. And often it's because the, the descriptions and the definitions have lots of metaphors and phys, you know, um, figurative language. Um, so it's very, it seems very abstract. So even this definition, so threshold concepts developed by Marinland are akin to a portal opening up a new and previously inaccessible way of thinking about something. So this in itself, you know, the the metaphor to portal as well makes it, you, you're sort of thinking, hmm, what does this actually mean? So one way of, of saying this is it's, it's when you encounter a piece of knowledge and you've learned it, um, then suddenly you start thinking about your discipline in a different way. So this either changes the way that you think and practice within your discipline, um, and that can be quite transformative. So there's a huge link between transformative learning and threshold concepts. So often they are described with these five characteristics. I think there are two more as well in more recently, but we're going to just focus on these for now. So transformative. So the idea is once you've learnt this said threshold concept, you are transformed in some way. So this could either be a personal transformation, it could be transformation um, in how you think and practice, it could, you know, it could alter the way that you um, you do your job, that you that the how you encounter this information and, and anything practical that you do with it. So it can it transforms. Um, the way you act, the way you think, and how you feel within that discipline. So there's a sort of an emotive component, and this links to, into the second characteristic, which is troublesome. So the idea is often when you've learned something, you may have to unlearn a previous piece of knowledge in order to acquire this, and hence the learning process can be quite troublesome. So often anything that involves us, us to change in any way or transform, that can be quite troublesome. Um, often because we generally are, lots of people are quite resistant to change, particularly um, things that are quite difficult to, you know, to change into. Um, integrative. So this is the idea that once you've learnt a, a threshold concept, other related concepts suddenly make more sense um, and you're able to understand how everything links. So this is sort of, sort of a more networked way of learning where once you've learnt a threshold concept, other, other linked um, subject matter also begin to make sense. Um, and bounded and irreversible. So bounded is the idea that learning is kind of, when you learn a concept in a particular discipline, it's sort of demarcated within that discipline. And so that is, that will be different to another, that same concept within another discipline. So I think this one is quite fiddly and annoying characteristic, so I don't take it very seriously, but um, this is another characteristic. Um, and irreversible means um, essentially once you've learned this, this uh, concept, this threshold concept, you won't be able to unlearn it or forget it just because it's so, it's transformed you in such a way that you're not going to be able to go back to how you previously used to think and practice. Now, I've got to warn you that there's lots of criticisms on the threshold concept theory. A lot, a lot of the reason is because of these characteristics and the way that it's not very clearly defined. So, for instance, does a threshold concept have to meet all these characteristics? Can it meet just one? 
Um, can it meet two? Um, what if it meets two really well, but it doesn't really meet the other three? Does that still count? And so lots of these arguments mean that it's quite difficult to get sort of a, a consensus on, on how to kind of the methodological approach. Um, however, for the purpose of this, or in, in my research anyway, I decided to focus on the first two. I thought they were, they were the most interesting, actually. Uh, even the third one, actually, integrative, is also interesting. I thought the others are a little bit, they, they seem too subjective. And also, I'm not entirely sure what the, what the sort of the purpose of something being bounded is. But that's just, that's just my opinion. Um, so uh, that's, that's essentially the characteristics. Um, now, these are two more... Um, aspects of threshold concepts which are really important to consider so the one is the liminal space so this is the idea of when you've learned something or when you're in the process of learning something rather you're you're often you've not entirely learned it but it's but you've encountered it and you're in this weird liminal space it's, it's like participating in a lecture um, so you're sitting in a lecture, you've encountered this new information, and whilst you're sitting in the lecture, suddenly you, you think, wow, I actually, I get this. this, this makes a lot of sense. Then you leave the lecture, and all of a sudden, if I ask you to explain to me what you've learned, you, you probably wouldn't be able to, and you sort of, you've kind of lost all the things that you've learned. Then you go back home, and you open up the, you know, the lecture handout, um, you have a look through the slides and then suddenly everything sort of comes back. And so whilst you're in that space of acquiring this knowledge, you're in, in sort of a liminal space. So you've not quite acquired that piece of knowledge, but you're in the process. And in with threshold concepts, we often focus on this space in trying to make the space as as easily um, a, for students to a, uh, access the space and learn in this space and sort of... Um, navigate this space in in the most kind of comfortable and easy way because often learning can be troublesome particularly when it's when it requires us to transform or change something that we're we're used to doing so this liminal space is a is a sort of a way of understanding this kind of emotional space that learners traverse when trying to learn something Inter-individual variation is the idea that each piece of, um, that threshold concepts can actually be unique to different people. So for, you know, for something that's a transformative for one person may not be in another, in the same way to another person, just because of, you know, the series of unique experiences, you know, one learner has had compared to another learner. And, and it's also this idea that we all start at different places in our learning journeys so that's also important to consider particularly when designing teaching activities it's important to consider you know who's in the room um, um, and what are their experiences and how will that shape the way that they acquire this, this piece of knowledge um, so this is an example of a transform transformation um, in the dissection room. So I'll just give you a few, actually, I'll, I'll get you to pause this so that you can take your time and have a quick read through this um, this paragraph. So this is quite a lofty, arrogant piece of writing, but it's, it's also very nice and very, you know, um, yeah, it's quite a stunning piece of of literature as well um, but here he, he describes this transformation of of the respectful student into the callous arrogant doctor and he you know he goes through all the different changes that students go through when they're in the dissection room and this is something that you as students may be familiar with either as students or or perhaps it's something you've heard about but people come into dissection with very there's lots of inter-individual variation in how people come into it you know there are students there are students who are you know terrified there are students who who navigate in different ways so some students choose not to stand near the head area because they find that too distressing uh, to look at the expression of the cadaver other students are fine um you know for some students I've, I've heard that they've you know been put off eating meat having been been through this experience and so it's, it's a very interesting learning activity um just because it conjures up and it has very different effects on different people and perhaps it does transform people in different ways so this is just a um this is just sort of an allusion to you know how this could potentially be threshold this is has many different aspects of threshold concepts within it um so this is this was from um a conference um given by the founder of threshold concepts so you know they talk about this 
idea that you know once we're if we're too frustrated at learning something new this can actually make us switch off you know abort the learning process and this is why it's really important for for teachers to ensure that students don't switch off entirely um because the difficulty lies not in the new ideas but in escaping the old ones which ramify into every corners of our minds so the idea that the you know our previous piece of knowledge was there for a reason or the way that we thought the world works in a particular way was there for a reason and now suddenly changing it can conjure up quite difficult emotions in students so it it does get us to consider this dimension as well so that's the end of this first part um so what i'd like you to do in your in the discussion forum is to think of the last time you struggled to learn something so this could be anything from um you know, learning how to ride a bike to, you know, aquatic breathing and swimming. That was one for me. Um, you know, it could be learning how to make round chapatis. It could be anything. And I really want you to think about the last time you struggled. And it could be something you learned when you were very young or it could be more recent. Um, and yeah.